Greetings, nerds. This is Sina Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Happy Pi Day. Doing very well. Hope you're doing well, sir. You are such a nerd. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Um, did you have any pie today? I did not have any pie today. Uh, I should have, but uh, never, never got the opportunity to uh, to go to the bakery or anything to to get some. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, me, me neither. Did not have any pie of a baking kind or a pizza pie either. So yeah, yeah, no pizza pie either. Yeah, the dinner was Chick Fil A. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, we don't have a Chick-fil-A up here. Really? Huh. Yeah, I've only ever had it one time, and that was back back in August of last mm-hmm. year when I was in Santa Barbara. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the first time I've ever had chicken flag. Filet. Huh. First and only. <laughs> <laughs> Did it live up to the hype? <laughs> well, it wasn't really hyped. My, We were just, I was with my coworker and we were trying to figure out where to go to eat. And she yeah. realized we were in short distance to a Chick-fil-A and she's like, no, we're going there. I'm okay. like, okay. Like, yeah. it made no difference to me. It just, right, it, right. it was, it was just fried chicken with fries. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. yeah, you know, I just remember, like, you know, the whole here in the lower 48, it was just, I guess a few years ago, there was the whole, like, Popeye's thing where people were, like, lining up around this, the corner. And even happened here in Durham where when they had to introduce their chicken sandwich, it was just, it was madness, I tell you. But, uh, yeah, people take, the, people take their chicken sandwiches pretty, pretty seriously down here in the lower 48. <laughs> wow. I'm not saying we don't up here, but (laughs) (laughs) anyways, um, other things that people take seriously and some people don't are the Oscars, which were held this past Sunday. Um, Will, did you watch? Actually, I did. This was the first time I've watched probably probably watched about 85 to 90 percent of the ceremony. Nice. In a while. Yeah. So, yeah, this year was just one of those years where I think, you know, obviously the barbenheimer phenomenon and uh, i knew last week when we were we had our discussion we were wondering if it was going to do uh you know clean up but uh i mean i thought overall i mean it won seven awards but but i think also things it was evenly not evenly distributed but other movies did get oscar love as well except for killer sort of flower moon (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> My, maestro maestro and 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 uh was that uh can't remember the other one but uh that was shut out that was also nominated best picture yeah well there was 10 movies nominated yeah so yeah but there was one that oh, got shut out past, past lives past lives that's what i was thinking about past yeah. lives there you go there you yeah. go yeah now i just realized i've seen three because i've seen past lives so that was what i yeah, that was the one I was thinking about last week. I I, I guess I got it and um, uh, the one that Emma Stone four went for. Things. Yeah, four things can be mixed up. But I remember you watching. Very different uh, movies. Very yeah, different. for sure. I was confused. <laughs> yeah. No, I just remember you watching one of the one of those two, and I just yeah, and, and I know you, you blanked on it, but then I'm I, as you just recalled. No, uh, I yeah. I watched. Um, I watched three, so I saw Oppenheimer, duh, like Mm. majority of the people did. Um, Oppenheimer, uh, Past Lives, and I saw um, Anatomy of a Fall. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I never, you know, I've heard people talk about Anatomy of a Fall, and I know it won Best Original Screenplay, but I did not realize it until... Literally looking at the, uh, you know, preparing for our discussion tonight, that it was a, a French courtroom drama. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I talked about it on this show, and yeah. I, I might have mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned so much the French or the fact that the son in it is deaf, um, okay. and how that played into the whole thing. But it's definitely a movie you don't want to know too much because, like, it's not that big of a plot. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it is. It is. But it's surprising how much English is used in it. So it's it's not I wouldn't necessarily classify it as a French movie, just like I wouldn't classify uh, past lives as a Korean movie because 
like the lang they use both languages mm -hmm. throughout the entire thing so it's like 50 50. Yeah. um but but yeah i i see but this is how much i did not like past lives i completely forgot about it <laughs> <laughs> and I, I watched which, that months ago yeah yeah um, which is probably why many academy voters felt the same way <laughs> well but at the time, I mean, even Snyder, I think, said, I think you told me that he said he he watched both Past Lives and Oppenheimer and got more feeling left with, like, it hitting him harder with Past Lives than Oppenheimer. Mm. Yeah. Now, I would say neither movie because Oppenheimer is good. I, mm. I completely understand it. Bravo to Nolan for getting his best directing award, Killian, Robert Downing Jr., who I called from the moment I watched the movie, was yep, going to get we, that. Yep. Um, or at least I was rooting for him to get it the whole time. So I understand the praise for it. At the same time, I still have it stuck in my head, something that I don't. Uh, some critics said a long time ago about Nolan, and I think it was around the time Interstellar came out. It's just that his movies at the end of the day are cold. Mm. And they're they're beautiful. They're um, a tour de force of sorts. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the, it's not that the characters aren't dynamic. It's not that the character stories are not fascinating. It's just that it's there's they don't tend to pull at your heartstrings as much. Mm -hmm. um, so so from that standpoint, I still I I have that in the back of my mind whenever I'm watching a Nolan movie where I'm like I I enjoy this, yeah. but it's not something that I feel as though I know the characters um, and I want to be in their world for a full day or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I remember whenever we talked about Oppenheimer, that was one of the one of the things that we we did discuss. And I I agree with you that his movies are cold. Um, and because I I think I watched Dunkirk um, short right around the time I think either right before Oppenheimer or after, just because I was just like I'm just on a Nolan kick, um, and 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 did that. Uh, but I will say Oppenheimer still to this day still resonates with me as far as just like that ending. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. Uh, and, and in particular speech that uh, interaction with one of a, a very famous physicist that um, and, and and all that uh, still rings still rings for with me as far as that that film. Yeah, I like how you said spoiler alert and you didn't even name the physicist. You still like were masking it under a non spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. um, the so I did not watch the Oscars. I've seen the clips. I've, of course, mm -hmm. watched Ryan Gosling perform. Yep. Um, I've seen John Cena <laughs> nudity. Yeah. I, I watched a few of the acceptance speeches. And for the most part, um, the only other thing that I had a thought about was just the fact that um, Across the Spider-Verse got robbed. Yeah. Well, I won't say it got robbed. Got robbed. I, I, you know, I haven't watched The Boy and the Heron, so I can't objectively say it got robbed. But I know, I know Shmeek Moore, <laughs> who voices uh, Miles, definitely said that. But he, he, he walked it back a little bit uh, after... Uh, after he was cooled down a bit, but um, but I was surprised uh, that it did not win. But you know, but I know I think we were like maybe uh, we mentioned this before, maybe either on here on the podcast or maybe just talking. And I even mentioned it to you the other night when we we're messaging that maybe it's like a middle of a trilogy thing where they're like, you know, we'll give you your flowers when we see the full thing. Maybe seriously, I mean. They ha the Oscars have something against that that middle movie, and I get it for the most part. I understand why Oscar voters voters might be like, yeah, but it didn't really have an ending because it was to be continued. Yeah. So it it was half of a story. You can make that argument, but to this day, that is one of the one movie 
granted, I did not watch a lot of movies last year, but one movie that I have rewatched mm-hmm. one time. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all. That's all I need is re- one time. That's a rewatch. It counts. <laughs> that's a rewatch. So, and it's just it's a good movie. It's well paced. It's co- comedy. It tells there's there's remnants of the. It's a it's a really good sequel. Yeah. At the end of the day. Um, and yeah, I just, I was, I was a bit disappointed by that, but I, I also understand, I can see how the voters might go off of, go after something else, um, that is one story a little bit more underrated. I get it. It's just, I just was like, uh, it was so good though. So yeah, and I think also I think I read somewhere where this was uh, uh, Hay- Hayao Miyazaki's last film because I think he's like 87 years old or something like that as far as the director for this um, for for the Boy and a Heron. So maybe that maybe that also played into it some as well. Maybe you you, you never know because we're not a part yeah. of the Academy, so we yep. do not know how these those things work. Um, and on that note, we're going to dive into the first of three episodes of Shogun we have to cover. Um, Shogun episode two, Servants of Two Masters. The IMDb episode summary says Blackthorn's arrival in Asaka stirs up a hornet's nest of rivalries. Mariko is trapped between her cause and her face when she must translate for the barbarian in Lord Toronaga's custody. So that is it. And I I have tried practicing. It's just that when I'm reading something, letters make my tongue do different things. Anyway, um, <laughs> Will, what did you think about this episode? So this was, and, uh, and really the theme for all three of these episodes we'll discuss tonight that it really, when you look at the story and stuff and the the, the machinations as far as the characters in there, it really, the, the, the titles really do illustrate what's going on there. Because, like, you, as, as you noted, um, Mariko's trapped between her cause and her faith, and, you know, that really does capture the dynamics that were that were going on in with the servant of two masters, uh, her, you know, where she is serving as a translator for the barbarian. And, you know, the question comes up, uh, you know, can you, you know, this man meaning Blackthorn insulted your faith. It, will that, in, will that impact your ability to translate for him? So, you know, so there's those kind of things and also just the dynamics between, um, uh, uh Shibe and, Shido and Tornaga, as far as like you know, Yashibe trying to like play off both of those two masters, and, and he's trying to serve both of them to, you know, as far as their particular ends, and and also, I really really liked the way that they started to peel back the the story and really get into some of the bigger things that are going on in in the world at that time yeah uh this episode i episode two servants of two masters i can appreciate them dropping this and the first episode together however Mm -hmm. i like how we didn't watch them back to back because i I feel as though the pilot episode pun intended was was really good at setting the stage but Mm -hmm. leaving a lot of questions about what was really happening while i believe in this episode we got a lot of answers Mm -hmm. and we got a lot of structure about who are friends who are enemies what are our players and and how how is blackthorn and blackthorn is more focus starting in this episode yeah. Um, moving forward. But at the same time, we get to learn a lot about Toronaga as we even start 
with a flashback to the night of Lord Teiko's death, which is really the the start of this whole chain of events mm -hmm. um, in Osaka. So, so we we have him, and then he explains what the Council of Regents are which we didn't have that information beforehand in the first episode, even though we saw the council. Yep. Um, but now we see how it's created. And it's kind of um, it's kind of a safety net <laughs> of sorts yeah, it is. To, that he put in place until his his son turned 16. Now, now there was a look. There was a look. And I am listening to uh, Roka's podcast that mm -hmm. he does. So I'm um, and he's right now talking with someone about the show and doing their reviews of a book reader. And I can appreciate that the book reader is not spoiling things as yeah. far as I can tell. Um, yeah. Now, so from what I understand, it's even more kind of um, evident in the book that potentially the air is Tornagas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and even, even, Thinking about a rewatch, as I mentioned to you, I was going to rewatch this episode because I had watched it late last week. And one of the lines that, um, you know, with that look that you're talking about and that, that Tycho and Tornaga, uh, when he's lying there, it's like the the uh, thing he says, we shit in each other, shit too many times in the same pot to piss on, on uh, our feet or something. And so I was just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> there's there's definitely some history there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it's their whole their whole like back and forth. And you can tell, you know, it really like for me watching that scene, it, it makes sense why he not only because Tornaga's Minowar, which, you know, of course, he's you know, high, high born, but also they he understands and they have a history there and a, and, a, and a level of trust there that I guess he knows that he he can trust Tornaga to do the right thing with with the son because he's going to follow tradition and not use this as an opportunity to you know, to usurp and, and and make himself you know like maybe like Ashido would uh, you know shogun over the over the over the country and also you know really keep keep the peace and not lead things and lead into war. Right, right. Um, well, yeah, we'll get there about we'll get there, yeah. war. Um, da, da, I, I had a thought about where to go to next. So something that I really appreciate about this episode was also the more emphasis on explaining the Portuguese and mm -hmm. and the Spanish. Yeah, and and I like how. And something happened in Macau that the Portuguese are trying to hide, and it's detailed in Blackthorne's journals. Right. So now the Portuguese want Blackthorne gone um, because he's a threat, because mm -hmm. he has information about how the Portuguese and the Spanish have divided up the map and all of these unclaimed countries and Japan falls under the Portuguese line. Mm -hmm. um, now, the Japanese are not aware of this um, right. until at the very end when when uh, Blackthorn draws his own map of the world <laughs> and <laughs> explains things. Um, and I just like how they they said it. They dropped it at the very beginning. And then they they gave you a lot of other things to pay attention to and to follow through on. Um, but really, the main point was explaining why a Blackthorn could be viewed as an ally um, and not an enemy. Mm -hmm. And also, at the same time, just the the larger politics that extend beyond just the internal fighting within Japan, which, and I think that's why I'm finding this show to be so multi-layered because you have this, this infighting, but you also have this bigger picture going on. And so you have Tornaga in the middle who now that he's aware 
is trying to not only outmaneuver his his um, rivals on the council, but also like put on his big boy pants and try to outmaneuver these um, these countries who have these people of power that he doesn't even know about mm-hmm. um, and who are making like trying to step up to that plate. So so I find I find um, that to be very clever and very entertaining um, to do. Yeah, yeah, I do, too. And especially, you know, it gets back to the, the title, too, as far as two masters, because, you know, in Blackthorn's case, you know, he has two masters. In the sense that, you know, one, he's, uh, you know, he, he he serves the queen because he's he's Englishman, but he's also been hired by the Dutch to, you know, to, to traverse and open up this, this, these lanes and, and, you know, and the question, you know, there, and the issue of whether or not he was a pirate, you know, came up and, and so, you know, so the one, on the one hand, yeah, if you look at it from the Dutch standpoint, yeah, he probably, you know, there, there was in those journals highlighting the fact that, you could look at the actions that they were doing were some form of piracy. But on the other hand, as he, as he was drawing his map and talking about the queen, I mean, he was also had the role as far as under crown of trying to open up relations. And, you know, he was talking to, to Tornaga about the queen and, and, you know, and, and, and being a the diplomat as well. So, you know, so again, that really, uh, you're right. I mean, having not only the internal, political dynamics going on there in Osaka Castle, but then also in, you know, when we bring it out to the larger world and you look at all these great powers, other great powers of the world fighting over these, these swaths of land and, and, you know, and then of course, you know, they throw in the religious element too, because, you know, the Portuguese, you know, the, 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 the church is, you know, also, like trying to you know profit from the riches of there of, with, with Macau and, and and you know and, and having the Ron in there as far as the you know with the with the uh, Spanish fortress and stuff. So I mean, there's just all those little things that are going on that really does make a a very layered story. Yep, yep. Uh, the last bit is um, that I want to mention is that in this episode we find out that Shogun. In Japan, is the ultimate rank a mortal can achieve? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, and it, you know, and it's also, you know, with that, uh, that was another thing too. Like whenever uh, Ashido was doing the very bureaucratic things and and ordering Blackthorn to to be imprisoned and 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 all that, um, you know, he would look over to the armor. Um, because you know, when you look around and you would see the Taiko's armor, who was the last Shugan. And and so it was and he's you know, he's doing these ministerial duties and, and having thoughts of grandeur and while he's you know, while he's just being a bureaucrat essentially. And then seeing all these other four other three regents um fight over you know, with the you know, the Christian regents doing their political things, you know, again, working their two masters, you know, they're two, they're serving of two masters. They're, they're, there's the thing of trying to enrich themselves as far as, you know, with having these relations with the church and, and using these trade routes and stuff, but also, um, uh, you know, also having their faith as well, as far as, you know, the, 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 the being converted and, and and doing things under the guise of religion and and and, and worship and those kind of things. So, I mean, again, this was a like you said earlier, it really did sort of set the table as far as. I'm glad we didn't watch them back to back because you're right. I think it, it it gave an opportunity to really get a better grasp or handle on a lot of the players in, in this universe that I felt like if I watched these things back to back. I probably I would have gotten it, but it may have. I think uh, spreading out, having a chance to marinate it on it a little bit more. Uh, I would have definitely understood it, but I don't think I would have been. Like I said before, all of the questions I had, 
I felt majority of them were answered in the second mm. episode. So I wouldn't have been left like, oh, I'm really intrigued. Right, <laughs> I would right, have been right. like, okay, good story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, know. yeah. And, and also just like the assassin there at the end. I mean, you know, and the whole dynamic, you know, figure, you know, having that mystery there at the end, like, okay. Especially given that we saw Yashibe having these conversations with Ashido and, you know, and setting up who was behind the attack. And then, you know, and especially when at first, because of all the political dynamics going on with the impeachment, you know, maybe folks think that, you know, this is just a way to like take out Tornaga, but actually the assassin was sent there to kill Blackthorn because of all the things that are, that, that are, are oh, going on with him. This is Spanish. I yeah. knew I were the Portuguese. I knew it was them just because I think the, uh, well, first of all, um, I'm going to be honest while watching it. I was very confused about where people were. So I, I never, I will be honest. I never had the thought like, oh, this assassin is going to go kill Tornaga. <laughs> <laughs> that thought never entered <laughs> my mind. I was completely like, they're going to kill Blackthorn. Because I feel as though how the episode was edited, the last, I feel as though we had just maybe a scene one or two before that was the um, the priests who were talking about what a threat he is and talking mm -hmm. specifically to the one of the three council or regents who are yeah. Christian. Yeah. And, and so that's where I was like, okay. And so <laughs> yeah. when that happened, I wasn't really surprised. And then, well, I was even more surprised when later they said, oh yeah, people thought that they were, he was after the assassin and wanted to kill Tornaga, but Tornaga was a trickster. So he, he did this maneuver and I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I mean, right. it was, Sure. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I mean, it, it was, I, th I think for me, it was just how it was set up. Uh, I just like the way it was, the way it was just sort of executed because I remember, you know, cause you know, you had Tornaga like setting up the guests, you know, setting up the bed and making the things and stuff. So when the assassin came, I was like, Oh yeah, I see where they're going here, but it was still, I, I, you know, it within the context of the, of the story, it, 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 uh, it, it made a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. And I like the way that it sort of unfolded, given like as you as you noted, uh, w with the uh, th with the Christian regents um, and and their alliances with the Portuguese and 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 all, yeah, it it, it definitely flowed very well. Right, and and it, especially because it's the perfect catalyst to um, kick off the third episode, Tomorrow is Tomorrow, where after Blackthorn survives a brazen assassination attempt, Toronaga realizes he must ferry his allies out of Asaka or risk certain defeat. So they, they took that and then, which the whole premise of this episode is Toronaga maneuvering people again to not only get his allies out, but also him out of Osaka. Um, and you know what? Mm -hmm. I think Lord um, Yabashuge is probably becoming my favorite character. Same. Um, and I understand he boiled a man alive in the first episode. Yeah, that was the first episode. We're in episode three where he's just having... He's having a conversation with Toranaga. <laughs> <laughs> and there's something about him where the actor is doing a great job to, I want to put him at the same like table as Anthony Starr playing Homelander, but I can see he's having fun. Mm -hmm. And I can also feel as though his character is really put in these situations that I think is the most entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which between this episode and the next episode, I'm just like, where, where, where is my man? Where, what is he doing? Cause I need to, because, and he's honest in this conversation. He's actually not seeking Shogun status. Mm -hmm. He doesn't desire that. He just right. wants 
more land. So in a way, he wants more power, but he's not after the main goal that um, Ishido and Tornaga are after and fighting about right now with the regents. So I so in that moment, I was like, OK, I get you. I understand you. And I also can appreciate he knows where he's strongest at. Yeah. Um, and I think it's I think it's very clever for them in this moment for him to say, I don't have the power or the mind for that role. Like, I'm not after being a bureaucrat or anything. Um, he does have all of this history of being a great samurai mm-hmm. and leading armies and all of that. And so, which I think is very telling, um, there's a scene that happens in the next episode that we can circle back to. But I, I like this conversation and I especially like it because you, it's it's so honest in this game of deception that people are playing where it's also like they both know that each other are going to tell some lies yeah. and they're going to make this agreement. But at the end of the day, both of them are going to do whatever is like the most self-pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like it's like honor among thieves. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah. yeah. Cause Tornaga asks, is she my, aren't you my reliable friend? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like yeah. complete sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, and so and so it, through the course of this, he managed to get Yabashuge to agree to lead his allies out of o- Osaka, um, unbeknownst to him and a few other people. <laughs> for an August sneaks in there too. And it's, it's very, um, it's very tense for, Mm -hmm. for a good portion of this episode. Um, but, um, what, what are some scenes that stuck out to you? Will? yeah. So the, the, the like you had noted, the, uh, scene between Tornaga and Yashube definitely sticks out, uh, because it really, as we just discussed, really gets into like the Toronaga is one of those on the one hand I'm like it's okay everybody else is is he playing chess and everybody else playing checkers or is he just really like super you know he's just really good at just staying one step ahead of everyone else and and sometimes he's just just playing out lucky but the other thing that really makes his character really under really understand where he's coming from is when Marco ta- tells Blackthorn the story about how when he was six years old, you know his 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 father, Josh Tornaga's father, um, it, he he was you know he was taken away, and uh, brought away to the, the the family's rivals. So you know he he, he learned that is the thing they say in the episode is the enemies are everywhere and friends nowhere. And so he just, you know, that's sort of the ethos that's driving him and making these decisions and stuff. So whenever he does that with, you know, when he has that, makes that statement to Yoshibe, you know, he, he is, you know, that he's speaking from experience as far as seeing how rivals play off of each other. And, and so that's something that really stands out to me. And also, you know, he, he's trying to impart that same lesson to his son, but his son is playing these other games. Uh, Nakato is like, uh, you know, he playing game of friends and enemies and, you know, he's and, and not choosing himself, which is something that Tornago learned very early in life. So those, so that really like does a great framing of like where, where he's coming from and in, in, in all these dealings. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, like Tornaga is right there, right up there with um, Yashobi um, as my favorite character. Um, mm-hmm. Just because he he is so smart and yeah. he's also not boastful about it. And right. he he allows um, like Mariko at one point 
to explain his plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> he realizes that she's actually following and connecting the dots more so than even his right hand man, um, her father in law. Yep. So uh, he, I don't know, he has this presence um, mm -hmm. about him where actually, you know, for the most part, all of the regents doing a great job. I especially love in this episode when um, Toranaga reveals himself and then um, like the men that they were protecting yep. and in the distance, you see the onlookers who um, are basically pro Portuguese, them, um, them looking down and like they're fighting each other. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is this is what we're talking about because it's not one war; right. it's a multitude of wars. And I and I think that was really telling in that moment. Um, we also continue. We we meet and see a lot more up until the end of. Um, Mariko's husband, mm -hmm. Bontaro, that's yep. his nickname, um, and who ends up self-sacrificing. Um, well, we don't know if he's dead because they oh, he's dead. didn't show it, but he, yeah. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Much, they, they, I just, yeah. 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 Because, I mean, Anyways. yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, it, it, it will be a dishonor if he got captured in the samurai <laughs> culture, so... Right, right, but he also didn't kill himself. Yeah, well, just, apparently that was a switch from the books because apparently they, he does commit uh, Subike on the on the dock um, when whenever they got whenever Toronaga and everybody was able to get to the galley and and, and off off the uh, off the island. So right, so yeah. so anyway, so Will's going to proclaim he's dead. He's dead. And um, which frees up Mariko, just saying. Um, yeah, but it was that was another interesting scene for me too. Just the, the look, because there were two things, you know. One, you know, the Toronaga calling him by his given name. Um, one, just to you know give him that honor. But two, also the look that she has to to him. One, it was a conflicted look the way I read it because, you know, as, as you noted, we haven't seen much of him but you know we saw more of him this episode than we have in the past but whenever we do see him he's always you know is cl the re relation he's a very domineering very uh brutal kind of dude i mean you know how you like with their son i mean he's always just like very rough with them as far as discipline and 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 talking to him and stuff so on the one hand she's like he's gone but on the other hand she's like i'm free now <laughs> so it was a very conflict I, I felt it was a very conflicted uh emotions that whenever whenever he was whenever he was killed yeah yeah, yeah. i i agree with that yeah i mean i don't yeah yeah agreed yeah. um hmm. so so now they're on the boats um but they're on a small boat and um, simultaneously, because there always has to be a, a C and a D storyline in the show going on, um, we talk about the Black Ship, which mm -hmm. is a Portuguese trade vessel that Tornaga actually denies its um, rights to leave. But the ship caption says, F you, I mm -hmm. have... A, I have a different master to serve and I'm going to go if I want to. Um, and that just so happens to be leaving at the exact same time that all of um, Toronaga and his allies are making their way. And they realize that they're surrounded on surrounded by some fishing boats. And anyway, this leads to Toronaga making a deal to get on in on the black ship so that they can, they can get free, get through um, and out of the dock. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it ultimately leads to a boat race because the deal go figure is that Blackthorn must stay behind. And uh, Blackthorn knows how to, um, how to, how to, I don't know, steer a boat 
Is that what yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he's yeah. piloting in the boat. Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. guess I get confused because there's no wheel. Yeah, like, it's the, the lever thing. <laughs> it's the lever thing. Very phallic, especially given he and, and, and uh, Rodriguez is like insults back and forth to one another. It was definitely like, you know, mine's bigger than yours going on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, but at the end of the day, Rodriguez has a debt to Blackthorn. And so instead of crashing his boat up against the rocks, he lets him pass and... Mm-hmm. Both ships managed to break free, and and so so they are on their way. And and the last bit of this episode was Blackthorn teaching uh, Tornaga how to dive, yeah. and then them ultimately swimming to the coast together. Yeah, yeah, See. yeah. Um, one other, you know, another thing too, with this, uh, before we move on to the next episode is, uh, a very important thing I think is notable in this episode is the fact that, uh, Tornaga resigns from the, the regents. Yes. Um, because that, you know, because again, the way that Taiko like set things up, five regents had to like agree, to, you know, to, to rule things. So, you know, how, you know, you can't impeach the guy if he's not on the council, but then at the same time, they can't govern the, the things because there's not five regents. So, again, he's just playing the big, uh, you know, playing the big game. And then also, like, you know, as you know, with with the boat, uh, with Blackthorn being left behind, just as we one, one thing I also liked about it is just when you thought that they were building, a you know, an ally and building an alliance again, you know, what we what us stated earlier about what Tornaga learned early in life he doesn't have you know I like yeah you may be an ally now but if 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 but you're also could be a pawn that if it it helps me move things to my advantage everybody is expendable so that's another cool that's another thing that I that I, that, I, that was just reinforced in this episode as well yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. And that leads us to episode four, the eightfold fence. Blackthorn and Mariko test their new alliance as they train Tornaga's gun regimen for war. Yabushige um, must navigate his past promises to Ishido when a old friend comes to the village. Um so I love how it took a good 20 minutes for us to realize that the island that they just arrived at is the same island that we met Blackthorn, Yabu Boucher, and um, others in the first episode. <laughs> we come full circle with this yep. island. Um, and so I was I really got a kick out of that. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Everything comes back. Yeah, because you're right. It, we were back to where we started, and um, and it was um. Well, we are back to where we started, but we're also things are different because yeah. what I also forgot to mention that happens at the very end of the last episode is that um, through this adventure or them getting out. Lord Tornaga decides to give Blackthorn a title, mm-hmm. Hadamoto. Yep. The Hadamoto title, yep. which is very significant. So yeah, yeah, he's so a vassal. He's, he's, yep. he's returning to this village where he was the prisoner, but now he's a title, mm-hmm. but he's still a prisoner. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's still just a pawn in the game. Um. And um, something else about their arrival and what I was hinting at, um, I think, in the episode two discussion or at the beginning of episode three was um, that we see them greeted and Yabushke, um, now I'm just making it sound Russian, yeah, Babushke. <laughs> Babushke. Um, he um, greets his army, and they are all yelling his name. And then he tells 
Tornaga to. And over the course of him doing that, you can see the look on his face where suddenly he's like, this is what I wanted, but whoa, they're, they're doing this a bit too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah. Especially like with the whole, uh, that was funny. I'm glad you brought that up because this, you know, whenever they were getting the village all the, the area cleaned up because the Tornaga's come out, coming and we got to like put on our best. And then, like, when all that goes down, and you know, because I think uh, Yabushige's, I think it was his wife, or maybe Omi's wife or mother, somebody was like, We got to get out the best sake, right? And then, after, like you said, after that went on a little bit too long as far as giving Toronaga praise, they're like, We shouldn't have kept giving the cheap stuff. (laughs) Yeah, especially because the man just disappears, like, he just floats away. And so, where did he go? He went to Ido. Okay, he went to Edo and just, okay, so. Yeah, he went to Edo to plan, to plan. This is is probably, I'm going to say right now, my least favorite episode I've watched so far. Mm -hmm. Um, Because after this good 20, 15 minutes, it just, it becomes very typical. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> very, I don't know. It's just it. A lot of the stuff. It's not that it rubbed me the wrong way. I was just like, oh, we're just doing basic storytelling now. Okay, now that the mastermind isn't around, suddenly these characters are very not as interesting as I would want them to be. And yeah, it's just I don't know. It. I didn't, I was, I I will admit, I checked out a good 10 to 15 minutes before the episode was over. I mean, I came back to watch people get, like, exploded. So, um, are you, so, so let's just put a finer point on it. So, was all the all the things going on with Black, the romance, budding romance story between Blackthorn and Mariko, and, of course, the whole things with Feed. Fuji, as far as her being his consort, is that the is it was it sort of the white savior trope thing that was like felt? I guess the romance story was just sort of uh, telegraph, not telegraph, but like not as compelling. Because I mean, it, the, the, I would say it's definitely telegraphed. Yeah, I knew it from the very beginning that those yeah. two were get together. Like, I yeah. didn't, I didn't need anybody to have read the book and tell me that those two. And I'm like, okay, those oh yeah, two yeah. yeah. Together, yeah. I actually did appreciate the um, bringing Fuji in because a, I, I'm glad they answered my question. Why are we? Why do we care about this baby and this this dad dying in the first episode? But now to understand her character and the importance of her later, and plus she had arguably one of the better moments in this episode yeah. with the revolver. So the musket. So I, it, but it was mainly just the stuff with Mariko and Blackthorn. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like they're both separately really good. And there are moments, brief moments where I find their conversations to be really interesting, but then they continue talking and I'm like, I'm so bored. <laughs> <laughs> I just and I'm gonna so this episode is called the eightfold fence mm-hmm. and they and Mariko explains what the eightfold fence is and I'm just thinking in my mind that that sounded way more fascinating in the trailers <laughs> than <laughs> what is being explained right now. And and it reminded me of what is said at the very end of the first episode about how you have three hearts. Mm-hmm. And and at the moment I was like, oh, that that sounds so cliche. So so I don't know. There I think you're right that there is an aspect that is more seen in this episode specifically because after three episodes. We're now really getting a heavy black thorn focused episode mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where I am like, I have seen a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows where, where they've done this mm-hmm. granted a lot worse 
yeah. But I've seen this story and it's so cliche that uh, suddenly the interest that I had in that first episode is drastically depleting because they also took away one of the more more interesting characters. Bring Toronaga back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm saying. laughs> yeah, yeah but the shadow of tornaga was well over this episode especially with the sun and omni especially whenever they were having that conversation um where omni 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 was playing the it, it, it was one of those things and on the official podcast they were like talking about the, that particular scene and i and i as far as like omni and and Ashido and and a lot of these characters are not high born, whereas Nagato is. And you know, and the lessons that um, Tornago is trying to teach his son, he you know he 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 didn't get. Whereas Ami did, you know, Shubei's nephew did like understand some of this stuff and like uh, and, and 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 how to you know keep your yeah, enemies, your friends close, your enemies closer, or I think that's how the you know the thing goes. But I mean, he was he was figuring all those things out as far as how to build these alliance, you know, you know, the alliances and 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 not playing friends and allies and that kind of stuff. But so that piece, you know, so I, I get what you meant, what you're saying about the Blackthorn and uh, Marco's thing, and I, I will, I will, I agree. It, it, it was the probably the least compelling aspect of the episode for me, but there was still a lot of things going on in between there that uh, that definitely kept me impact. I mean, for me so far, the third episode is definitely for me is the the, the, the stand up, but this one, um, you know, it had it had a lot of things going forward, especially um, whenever they were out there training and and you know. I did like, you know, speaking of Blackthorn and Marco, I, I like how she called bullshit on the, whenever he was trying to like relay the story of Malta. <laughs> but right. yeah, so I mean, those kind of those, like you were saying, there was those elements like that where those things did stand out. Um, and, and, but also how he responded, like, look, I'm a Navy guy. I, I'm a, you know, he told him before, I'm not an infantry guy. I'm a, I'm a seaman. And, and, so, and, so, so I have a question for you because, yeah. um, I was I was watching the episode, but I also was checking out here and there. Mm -hmm. um, so I I understood the predicament that y Yaboshigo Gay is in, um, and in the circumstance of where Ishido's men have arrived mm -hmm. and now want him to go back to Ahsoka. Yeah. Um, granted probably for his death because yeah. he betrayed Ishido. Right. So I understand that. But what I don't understand is why his nephew, his I don't understand his nephew's plan. So his nephew essentially gets um, brainwashes or, or just like plants a little seed in Tornaga's son's head that mm -hmm. um, he should fight this battle uh, because Ishido's men are they're the enemy and it, like you have to make a stand so people will stop start recognizing you instead of you as your father's son or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so that leads to him essentially declaring war on Ishido by blowing up his his infantry men. Yeah. So, but how does that help Yabushiga Gay in it, the end? It, so, well, it doesn't. I mean, because you know, like as you as you said, I mean, Shubei was going. You know, he you know basically when Josen Ashido's uh, number one like shows up and because they hear the cannons going off and stuff, and 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 of course. You know, and of course, Toronaga leaving Osaka Castle without permission. Right. So, 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 whenever he, when Josen and Yag Yabushige, uh, whenever he was like bragging about, look, we've learned these new tactics that are going to help us against the, you know, help us in, in our fights and stuff. Um, you know, Jos Josen was like, 
All right. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be surprised. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, he was very dis- dismissive of it. Um, yeah. So I don't it. So it doesn't help. It doesn't help you at all. At the end okay. of the day. Because it yeah. people I mean, been- cause, but but I will say. Uh, you know, Omni's been playing this game from the moment, from the first episode, really, uh, when they first saw, when they first discovered the Erasmus and the men, you know, as you, as, as you said earlier in the episode, Yabashuge would just be happy just expanding his fiefdom. His nephew has larger ambitions. But, but what is that larger ambition? Like, what does this even get Omni? Um, I, I th- he, he wants, I think he, 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 he wants to have, uh, a seat on the council, ultimately. But how does that get him there? Um, I think that's something that we'll have to sort of. I mean, now that he, I mean, I, I guess, think, but, I, but I guess I, building, I guess building an alliance with Toronaga's son. But um, yeah, it doesn't seem like an alliance because actually, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I, I can. I'm glad to hear that. That it sounds as though I didn't miss something. No, you um, didn't. The way people are talking about this, I'm just, I was co- very confused because to me, I'm just like, I don't understand the strategy here. Um, and so that's why I can't necessarily say that he's a very strategic thinker because I don't, I understand that he wants power, unlike his uncle. But I'm I'm still not shown exactly what tactics he's using to get it. Um, I just basically well, seen well, like rem- manipulation of a character, but I don't know why. Yeah, well, remember, I think it's the ambition, and and, and the, one of the things you know, as I as I was looking back through my notes here, I made a note that uh, whereas the uh, Nag- Nagato didn't get what Tornaga was trying to tell him. Tornaga didn't get what Nagato was trying to tell Tornaga, which at the beginning of this episode, he did say an ally with ambition is no ally. And so, okay. And so, yes. So I think even though Yabashuge and Ami are acting like we're all friends here and stuff, I think, you know, by pushing Nagato to like do this rash act to like set to set things in motion for war uh which you know at the end of the day i guess he's hoping that these various rival factions like take each other out and that there'd be a vacuum where he can sweep right in and become but either fill fill see i think we're we're missing it and it just dawned on me it's not so that they take each other out it's that they actually do end up taking out their uncle his uncle yeah. mm-hmm. like he he wants his uncle to to he die to crosshair so that he gets to be the lord yeah that's it so okay i mean granted i could argue well if he returned to osaka that would have happened too but whatever <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah but then but then it would be he would be dishonored because he now you know, this way, you okay. know, it was very... But, but see, see, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense now that you bring up the dishonoring fact of it because it would be the whole family. Okay, we're yeah. getting somewhere with this. Yeah, um, yeah. One Close. thing, though, I want to point out that yeah. is kind of an inconsistency with this nephew character is that um, Yabushiga, in the very first episode, had to explain to his nephew why he he wanted to keep hold of the ship and the barbarian so much Mm -hmm. so i keep thinking about this while we're having this conversation and for someone who in later two episodes later explains that he doesn't understand the politics and doesn't have the, the head in that first episode we're introduced to him and he seems very smart and now, now later in the fourth episode, I'm supposed to believe that his son, no, his nephew, is 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 even more strategic than he is. I don't know. I, I think I think you're right though, but it's more about the ambition, not about the strategery. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not about strategery for sure. 
Uh, it's the ambition. And, uh, you know, but the Siege of Planet, I remember way back in that very first episode, whenever they found the ship, as I, as I mentioned earlier, that he, you know, Omi was already thinking, like, how can I use this to my advantage? Um, Yashubi, Yabashige is just, <laughs> he's just like, let me stick up the wind and see which way the things are going, and I will do what I need to do to, like, but no, but he told. But, but he, but I think he has a death wish too, though, because he was like, remember, he was making out his, I don't know if it's a death wish or something, but he, he's, he, I think he's just trying to like stay alive or oh, completely self preservation because so, yeah. the thing he was good at, he can no longer do it yeah. essentially because he's, he's a soldier who doesn't have a war. And well, right. now he has a war, but. I, I understand what you're saying, and I can I agree that to an extent the ambition in his nephew in Omni was like that seed was planted in that first episode. But I still am going to argue that it was Yabashuge, his uncle, who explains to him, mm -hmm. like beat for beat, why it is so critical that they they retain um a hold of the ship in the barbarian because right. of this internal fighting between Torinaga and Ishido and then right in that split second we have Torinaga's right hand man arrive and say oh you didn't realize that we knew which yeah. i did make a note and i have a feeling it was actually omni who sold out the fact that Blackthorn um, and the ship had arrived at, at the island. Yeah. Like, I now, if that's true, I might take back a little bit of what I'm saying. <laughs> because that <laughs> is very strategic. Yeah. Because he's playing a different game than everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, just because of every time it's mentioned, there's a look on his face where I'm like, you, you know something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, he very well could be the the spy. The other person I thought might have been a spy is there's been like this common guy, this commoner, who always just sort of shows up. In in because he showed up again in this episode, um, in the village. Uh, I guess he was like, and 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 I, I don't know if he's just a common guy, just to, that that just happens to be at the right place at the right time, or or if he is the rat who is like feeding information back to, to, to the folks. Cause he, you know, cause that would, um, but so we'll see what happens there, but I, you, you're right. I mean, it, it would not surprise me though, if Omni was the, was the person who was like playing like his uncle playing both sides. Yeah. Um, the, the last bit, um, that I want to talk about is, yeah. Um, for as much shit as I give all of Black Florida Mariko scene in this episode, I did appreciate the conversation where Mariko brings up um, the fact that they have earthquakes, tsunami, death is in Japan's air, water, and land, and we live and die. Con we live, we die, and we can control nothing beyond that. And I think I really appreciate that mm -hmm. because that brings so much understanding for me um, in terms of why there is such a practice of choosing to kill yourself mm -hmm. um, when you don't foresee another action because you have these other forces at play that are make are threatening to make that take that one choice from you um and and I really like how it was just like they they didn't over explain it. Mm -hmm. They it was a perfect metaphor, and there was a lot of scenes um, in previous episodes that that allowed you to make that connection as a viewer. So I yeah. I do applaud um, how that scene was written, or maybe not that scene, but just like that one part. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean that that was very. It really you're right. I mean it did. Uh, in a, in a very good way of exposition, like give context to like all of this, what's just going on. And, and also really is a good, like 
Well, especially when you, when you consider how the end of the episode happened with the, the, the brutality of, you know, the, the cannons being unleashed and everybody getting disemboweled and blown to pieces and stuff. Why they have really have kept the peace and, and trying to do their best not to go to war because just the just a waste that it, it, it would cause uh, you know, the, these people. So, um yeah, so that, that was. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that scene up. And the the, the other, since we're talking about uh, Marco and, and Blackthorn, uh, the, the the scene that thing that, that sticks out to me, especially just as we move forward, um, after you know after they do hook up, well, after the gift was given and the courtesan, <laughs> whether or not it was her or not, I like the way that they that how they played it off that next morning. Where mm-hmm. she where she basically set up a situation, you know, talking about it in front of Fiji, where they have complete plausible deniability with with what happened that night before. Then I'm pretty sure they were I'm pretty sure they thought. So Yeah. 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 No, that that was that was fine. That was yeah. that was charming. I just I just feel like it's all too soon. It's all too mm. soon. It's all too telegraphed. <laughs> yeah. We only have ten episodes, so there's no second season, so they gotta get it in. <laughs> I, I don't care. I don't care how it's written in the books. I don't. I don't care. You. You make people earn it. You. I mean, good romance. Sometimes all you need is a kiss, too. You don't have to actually watch them have like watch them fuck. Like, no, no. Come on, it's got to be well earned. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, well, or they have it, but but then he dies, you know. Yeah. yeah. And again, well, like I'm guess, someone who's obsessed with the show one day, so you know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I just like the plausible deniability there, because especially to your point about it being so so being so soon, like your lady, your your you know, your husband just got killed last last night. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe maybe longer, but you know that was well, other thing because it was winter. It was in winter, the yeah. Town. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I I think that that's a few days journey at least. But granted, within the yeah. same week, you lose your husband and then fuck the barbarian, really. Yeah. Um, but but I get it. She yeah. she probably hasn't had sex with her husband in about how old is her son? Uh, he looks to be a teenager, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the last time they had sex. <laughs> yeah, but to that point about the you know the whole consort and stuff too, I, I like the way I'm glad they did explain like you know and, and to the thing about being too soon and stuff, it's like it makes total sense why you know Fiji was like, okay, I'll be at your consort for six months just so we can honor that you being a Hadamoto and you know you gotta follow the traditions. And I did and, and, and I did like the fact that. You know, once she, you know, as, as we were just discussing earlier, whenever she had the pivotal scenes there with the uh, the men and the and the pistols and later uh, dinner and all that kind of stuff, as far as him eating, you know, learning more traditions, learning how to speak Japanese and that kind of stuff, you know, they 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 reached an, an understanding, and so you know, she did give her father's old swords to him so he can be, you know, he can be official. Uh, and, you know, after he gifted her the after the muskets, uh, the pistol. So I mean, it was those those were those were like the little the little things that they do in the story that I appreciate as far as just really a, you know, the, with the culture and some of those beats like that. Uh, that that's that this really makes this to me like adds a le- depth to this and authenticity that that this show really really conveys throughout. Yeah, I am. I'm still on board with Shogun. Um, I just have to be honest. This episode, it felt more like a a step back for me, just because I, it makes me start I start to read into things a bit more and like. <laughs> <laughs> and and when you have time to do that, because the story is kind of just becoming like too stereotypical you're like okay um but but I'm, I'm still interested to see where this goes however I'm kind of also starting to have some um I guess reverences or I'm very 
I'm starting to act very cautious because if this episode is a sign of what's to come, I'm like, okay, I've seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it doesn't take just having like a lot of stories have been told and then you just watch something and it's basically the same thing. It's just with different characters, a different setting that be, so I'm not taking away from um, the cinematography is great. The writing, I think they, I think they're kind of, um, it's not as strong right now for me, um, mm -hmm. but it could pick up again in later episodes um, with the return of Toronaga. I'm just going to say that. Uh, yeah. So, and the acting is real. The acting for the most part, pretty good. Um, I haven't had, I haven't been too mad at any of the performances given. Um, and I just remembered Rodriguez, like we got him for one episode, another episode. And, and then we have, he was also missing from this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Missing, missing. <laughs> Rodriguez will be back. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I think the, the shadow of Tornaga definitely like, um, was, you can say that, but I missed him. So, um, yeah, it was there, but I, I agree that there is, he adds, whenever he is on screen and an active role, it, the, the episodes do take a, a, another level. I, I would agree. Um, because as soon as, yeah, I mean, I, I felt the same way with this episode where once he left off to go to Edo, I was like, we're getting it back, right? But, yeah. Nope. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>